got an interesting little circuit here uh, just built up on the workbench on a bit of breadboard um, it's a ring counter uh, it's, it's being clocked over here by this signal coming from a signal generator and you can see I've got four stages and these big LEDs are actually part of the circuit the circuit requires a diode in that part of the circuit and so I've used LEDs and they they light up to show which stage of the circuit is conducting um, over here there's a little transistor which is a voltage regulator so that there's a um, 12 volt supply across the whole thing and this is making about 5.3 volts on a signal down the bottom here and over this side I've got a transistor and a little metal case there the TO18 case um, fed from the signal generator on this yellow wire and that's acting uh, as a kind of uh, buffer amplifier to amplify the signal from the signal generator which is giving us a square wave um, and feeding up to the top there through that link to a, a line at the top. Um, I got this circuit from a website I'll link to that in the description below. Um, the reason I chose this particular circuit and there's two transistors per stage here one PNP one NPN you'll find on the internet uh, lots of circuits for ring counters of various kinds this one is clocked from a signal generator externally you can do it with only a single transistor per stage but then if you do that you rely on the capacitors between stages to set the timing you just power it up and it goes with this one if I disconnect the input signal it will stop so it's not being timed by the internal um, capacitors between stages which it has capacitors between stages but they're not part of the timing they're, they're these um, brown topped uh, capacitors here they're 0.1 microfarad and they act as a coupling between stages but you can see if I disconnect the input signal it stops so it doesn't self oscillate it requires an input signal now I can vary the frequency of that input signal on my fine Hewlett Packard signal generator and I can make it go a bit faster or I can make it go a bit slower so I can vary the tempo of what could be a sequencer imagine these were connected to a, a synthesizer and a different note would sound for each one this would be a sequencer and I could vary the tempo of the um, sequence by varying the frequency of the oscillator that drives it Now I could quite easily, I think I probably will, build an oscillator out of transistors. I only need a couple of transistors to make a little oscillator that can be voltage controlled. I'd like to have more transistors. So I could end up with a voltage controlled tempo driving a little oscillator over here somewhere that would clock this thing. So a control voltage from a synthesizer could control the rate that these things um, go through their their cycle. But as I say, this uh, this has got two transistors per stage. A little bit uh, more complicated because of that. One's NPN, one's PNP. Um, I've just used fairly ordinary uh, BC two one four as the PNP, and BC five four nine is the NPN. They're in TO ninety two packages, so I can breadboard them. Um, it's got some 10k resistors down here it's got some I think they're 160 ohm at the top here to make the LEDs come on nicely uh, the capacitor over here is simply to uh, smooth and decouple the uh, 5.3 volt line on this line on the breadboard I'm actually using all four power lines on the breadboard for this one for once um, and then there are 0.1 microfarad capacitors in between stages and there's a wire going around the back this wire at the back here takes the the last stage back to the first so it makes a makes a ring out of it and the thing will sit there quite happily um, cycling through its uh, ring counting cycle I'm not sure what to do next I think I want to connect this up to something that will um, go through a cycle of voltages to control a VCO a voltage controlled oscillator that would make it into a proper synthesizer sequencer 
but I don't really want to use integrated circuits. I've done this with d discrete transistors. It'd be quite fun to do it all with discrete transistors, and that would mean doing something to switch an analog voltage accurately on and off. I'm beginning to think relays might be the best way of doing that. Seems a bit um, rudimentary, but hey, it's all discrete transistors. It is rudimentary. Um, so there we go, the sort of thing I've been playing around with recently on the workbench. Bit of fun to see if I can make a discrete transistor ring counter and eventually turn that into a sequencer. <laughs>